From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss how you can prepare for the future of marketing. Joining us is Konstantin Yurovich, who is the CEO and founder of SegmentStream, which is a conversion modeling platform that helps to measure and increase digital marketing performance in a modern cookie-less world where existing analytics and attribution tools are no longer reliable. Yesterday, Konstantin and I talked about preparing for Google Chrome's cookie restrictions, and today we're going to talk about what marketing strategies you need to retire. All right, here's the second part of my conversation with Konstantin Yurovich, the CEO and founder of SegmentStream. Konstantin, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Great to be back. Excited to have you back on the show and continue our conversation about looking into your crystal ball and thinking about the future for marketers. Yesterday, we talked about what the impact of Google's cookie restrictions are going to be. And basically, my takeaway from that conversation was your analytics are still going to work. You're going to understand and you can use first party cookies to see what's happening with your user's behavior on your owned properties. But for advertisers, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because you can't get access to that sort of cross website activity that helps you do your targeting. Now, that means maybe we're going to rely less on our performance marketing moving forward And it brings up the question that I want to talk to you about is, all right, if we're seeing third-party cookies go away, if we're seeing changes in how marketers are using data, we've seen GDPR and CCPA, privacy restrictions, seems like the world's changing a lot right now. Talk to me about what are the marketing strategies you think that are no longer going to be useful moving forward? First of all, analytics will still work but it already works quite poorly. So the biggest problem that right now you cannot understand your full customer journey. And we've even made a very interesting experiment with one of our clients. So they've been analyzing performance of their Facebook and Google. And like normal analytics and like normal Google Analytics was showing that Facebook is responsible for like 2% of their revenue. But then they decided to completely switch off Facebook, switch off all their ads for some period of time. And their overall revenue dropped like more than 20 or 30%. So this means that all the numbers that you already see in your analytics are not trustworthy, even without any third-party cookie restrictions. And the biggest problem is, of course, cross-device and cross-browser analytics. So there is no way to stitch customer journey between different devices. And I would say this is the biggest problem that is facing marketers already, especially when they have longer sales cycle and they don't have like emotional purchases that are made within the first visit. All right. So there's some changes in how we think about analytics. Talk to me about the marketing strategies. Are you going to stop your cold outreach? Are you going to move away from performance marketing? How are you going to make up for the loss of data? What are some of the marketing tactics we should be moving away from? So right now we see rise of machine learning and we see that all advertising platforms, Google, Facebook, they heavily rely on machine learning to target users and to optimize your marketing strategies. And the only feedback mechanisms they use to make optimization is a conversion. And they rely on the conversion tracking. And this conversion tracking is handled 100% by advertisers. And the biggest problem with conversion tracking that it is essentially broken because we know that when customers come from different devices, you cannot properly track conversions. When we face ITP and longer sales cycle, conversions are not trackable. So I would say the biggest problem is how to solve conversion tracking so that advertising platforms could continue target proper users and properly optimize. So what we do at SegmentStream actually we shift from the concept of tracking conversions to the concept of analyzing each single visit on the website. So instead of waiting for the final conversion, 
we analyze each single website visit and evaluate the probability for the customer to convert in the future. Because we know if we don't send a positive or negative signal to the platform right now, it is a very, very high probability that the signal will be lost due to cross device or due to ITP or due to other limitations. So I would say the first marketing strategy that needs to be retired is optimization based on normal final conversions or cookie based conversions. So this is the first thing that you need to retire in your strategy, especially if you have longer sales cycles. If you have upper funnel marketing strategy, if you invest a lot in display in Facebook, you definitely need to replace this feedback mechanism in form of final conversion with something more predictive, something more reliable. Have you heard of, I'll give credit to Chris Walker for this, but the notion of dark social? No, no. Okay, so basically what he's saying is that all of your conversion attribution metrics are wrong. And we're giving credit to the last click for the most part, where even if it's not click, if you have some sort of multi-touch attribution model, all of the things that don't necessarily drive a click are the things that actually have the biggest impact on your users. So things like listening to podcasts, attending a webinar, reading a white paper, word of mouth, like those are all incredibly impactful parts of the marketing journey and also things that are basically untrackable by standard conversion analytics. So when you have a post-purchase survey and you ask people what drove you to buy our product, they're often saying the most impactful thing is the thing that you can't track. So what I'm hearing from you is we can analyze an initial website visit. We're not looking at the conversion because honestly, if we think a conversion might happen, it's hard to figure out what drove it because of the cross attribution problem. How do you factor in for this notion of dark social, the things that are not clickable, not necessarily trackable for their impact in marketing? So, of course, it depends on the type of the business. For example, in a B2B business, in business like ours, we still have a possibility to talk to our customers, to ask them, like, how did you hear about us, etc. But for many e-commerce businesses, for example, where there are like millions and millions of daily visits, it's very hard to make any interviewing process with a customer. And mostly advertisers still rely on performance marketing. So they understand how much money they put into certain advertising channels and how much money they get out. So this dark social, I would say, is a very tricky area. And most of the medium and large businesses, they still rely mostly on performance marketing. But if we go to larger budgets or to B2B, of course, marketing mix modeling might be a solution here. But the biggest problem with marketing mix modeling is that it is very hard to find significant change in your purchases if budget is not significant. It means if you just invested $10,000 in YouTube, $10,000 in some podcasts, $10,000 in offline advertising, $10,000 in some flyers, it's very hard to understand whether this action actually made any impact because the budget is quite small. On the other hand, if you're a huge brand, some FMCG company, and you invested $10 million in new TV advertising, of course, in your analytics, you will be able to see the spike in purchases and you will be able to attribute this spike to your action and you will be able to statistically understand what is the probability or incremental value of particular action. So this is a very tricky area. And I would say right now, only very, very big advertisers are able to utilize marketing mix modeling properly. For everyone else, it's like reading tea leaves. It's very, very inaccurate. All right. So we're seeing the changes in attribution. It's hard to figure out that sort of middle level of tracking to understand what's truly impacting your business. And performance marketing might be a little less effective because we're seeing the deprecation of third party cookies. So help me figure out what to do moving forward. If I'm planning my 2023 and even 2024 marketing strategies, what levers are you pulling down harder and what levels are you pushing against to say, I'm not going to do this? Are you moving away from performance marketing? more towards content and nurture type content? Are you doubling down on analytics? How are you rebalancing what your marketing strategies are to get ready for the future? I would definitely double down on using machine learning and replacing deterministic way for analytics with probabilistic. What it actually means, instead of waiting for the final conversion to happen and then stitching back the whole customer journey, which essentially is not possible in any ways, we can move away from this approach and move to probabilistic approach. So instead, we just analyze the customer behavior when the customer comes to the website. And based on this behavior, we can easily predict the probability to buy in the future. 
And this allows us to immediately create some kind of conversion. We call it modeled conversion and immediately attribute it to the traffic source. So actually it means that you will never lose a conversion again because a conversion will be immediately attributed to the initial traffic source and will be immediately fired back to Facebook and to Google for the optimization. I feel like we're in this chicken or the egg portion of marketing where you need high volumes of data to train your machine learning algorithms, but we're seeing less data being applicable. So there's this need for more machine learning, more data science, but the amount of data that we're actually able to collect and use is getting smaller. So if you've got the data, you might be very successful moving forward. And if you haven't, you need to find a way to start collecting your own data, that first party data signal is going to be more and more important moving forward. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Konstantin Jurovich, the CEO and founder of SegmentStream. If you'd like to get in touch with Konstantin, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes, or you could visit his company's website, which is segmentstream.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can contact me directly. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. Thank you.